Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa mursaleen. Nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma infa'na bima alamtana wa alibna ma yinfa'una. Allahumma zidna ilman innaka anta alimul hakeem. Allahumma ijal hadihi kalima hujjatan lana la hujjatan alina. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Amma ba'ad. Ba'ad al-taqwa. So we're going to skip forward a little bit to another chapter in the book, Riyadh al-Salihin, the chapter of a taqwa Taqwa. Have any of you ever heard this word taqwa before? What's it mean? Huh? Fear. Fear. Taqwa means fear? Tayyip. Anyone else? Conscious. Conscious? Conscious of Allah. Tayyip. Anyone else? Huh? Remembrance of Allah. So if someone said to you, with taqillah, that means have remembrance of Allah? Maybe. Right? What else? I don't know. The term taqwa, the term taqwa, ma'khul uh, men, it came from the term in Arabic, it's called wiqaya. So the word wiqaya in Arabic, it means to take something as a protection. Protection, right? So, wahuwa inya. يَتَّخِذَ الْإِنسَانَ مَا يَقِيهِ مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ So a waqaya is also kind of in a way like a barrier. A barrier. A barrier in a way kind of like a shield. Right? And it is used to, the word taqwa is a barrier or a shield used to protect someone from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, what is that protection or shield that will keep a Muslim away from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Acts of worship. Like, anyone else? Obedience. Huh? Obedience. Like, according to uh, the definition that was used by Shaykh Uthameen, Rahim Allah, he said, وَالَّذِي يَقِيكَ مِنْ عَدَابِ اللَّهِ هُوَ ثِعْلُ أَوَامِرِ اللَّهِ That doing the things that Allah has commanded us to do, وَاجْتِنَابُ نَوَاهِهِ And stay away from the things that Allah has prohibited us from. فَإِنَّ هَذَا هُوَ الَّذِي يَقِي مِنْ عَدَابِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Those are the things that will protect us from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we do the things that Allah has commanded us to do, and we stay away from the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to stay away from. Sometimes we'll find that there's a connection between piety and the term taqwa. Between piety and the term taqwa. For you call it birru wa taqwa. As we find in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى بِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى تَعَاوَنُوا Meaning, work one of you together upon birri, piousness, righteousness, and taqwa. In having uh, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as is translated, or by taking that protection or barrier from Allah's punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also mentions in the Quran various aspects of the Quran. <clears throat> Allah Jalla wa ala, He says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, Taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi. Taqullaha in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fear Allah as he ought to be feared. So here, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu taqullaha haqqa tiqatihi. Haqqa tiqatihi. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to here? 
to the believers. How do we know that? Because the verse says, O you who believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayah, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, meaning, O you who believe, ittaqullaha haqqa tukhatihi. Fear your Lord the way that he deserves to be feared. Bye. In order to have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do we need to know? Our religion? I need something a little more specific than our religion. What do we need to know? What do we need to know? To have taqwa, what do we need to know? Huh? In order to have taqwa, remember taqwa is to create a barrier between yourself and the law's punishment, a shield, protection. Huh? In order to have this, what do you need to know in order to have that? How do you get it? Because a person just wakes up with taqwa? Knowledge of the punishment? Okay, that's, that's one way. What else? It was commanded and for good. But one of the ways that will help a person achieve taqwa is to have knowledge of your Lord. Have knowledge of who? Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haqqul taqwa. When we say haqqul taqwa, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says haqqul taqwa tihi, it means in another verse they say, but taqullaha mastata'atum. In another verse, Allah says, fear Allah to the best of your ability. Fattakullaha mastata'atum. Fear Allah to the best of your ability. What do we understand from that? You read the Quran, and if you find in the Quran where Allah says, Fattakullaha haqqa tuqatihi, and then Allah says, Fattakullaha mastata'atum. Everybody sleep. Huh? What does that mean? Fatakullaha mastata'atu, meaning fear your Lord your Lord to the best of your ability. What do you understand from this verse? Huh? Behind closed doors? Behind closed doors? Okay. Huh? Open and close. Is it possible? That a person can understand from this verse that everyone's taqwa will be different? No. Is that not possible? Meaning, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fattakullaha mastata'atu, fear your Lord to the best of your ability. Can you understand from that that there are going to be different levels of taqwa? Perhaps you're going to have more fear of Allah than me, or that person's going to have more fear of Allah than that person, etc., etc. Is that something that's easy to understand? Like, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fattakullaha mastata'atun. This is, this is something that will let all of us understand that every person's taqwa is going to be on different levels. We have some people that their level of taqwa is going to be on a very high level. Huh? It could be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them that ability and he maybe didn't give you that ability as of yet. Right? But one of the things that we also have to understand from that is that a taqwa is tied to al iman. Iman, meaning how we believe in Allah. What is the belief Ahsan? What is the belief of Ahlu Sunnah as it relates to Iman? Belief in Allah. Does anyone know? I said, what is it? Explain it to me. What is it? What is Iman? Iman is faith? But what about it? Tell me about it. What type of faith? How do you show it? So he said, you show your faith by actions. Right? That's it? So if we just do actions, we're good? So actions and intent. So your act, your limbs and what's in your heart, then you should be good. Huh? 
in a tongue. So then, Iman, Iman, as it relates to Ahlu Sunnah wa Jama'ah, is a statement of the tongue, meaning the profession of Iman on the tongue, right? Statement of the tongue, belief in the heart, and action of the limbs. Ahsant. Yazidu bi ta'a wa yanquz bi ma'asi. That our Iman, it increases with obedience to Allah, and it decreases with what? Disobedience to Allah. So when we look at this verse, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fattakullaha mistata'tum. Fear Allah to the best of your ability. This could be an indicator to show us that the Muslim, his belief in Allah is not going to be the same. Some people may have more with them in terms of Iman, and some people may be weaker as it relates to their Iman. Or they're just not able. Muslim they don't have the ability for whatever reason. And this goes back to the hadith and we look at the Prophet Ali Salat Wasalam where he says about a person's kudra, I mean their ability, right? Fatakullah mastatum. And I fear Allah to the best of your ability. <clears throat> In this authentic hadith of Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when the Prophet Ali Salat Wasalam he said, Salli qa'iman. Salli ish qa'iman. A Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, pray while you are what? Standing. Pray while you're what? Standing. And then he said, فَإِن لَمْ تَسْتَطِيعُ فَقَاعِدًا Then sit down. فَإِن لَمْ, يست... فإن لم تَسْتَطِيعُ فَعَلَى جَنْبٍ And if you can't sit down, then you pray on your side. This issue of the salat is very important. Here, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave a command, we can go in many different places with this hadith. He gave us a command and told us that when we pray, then we are supposed to stand. When we pray, we are supposed to what? Stand. If you're not able to stand, then you can pray what? Sitting down. And if you can't pray while you're sitting down, then you must what? Lay on your side. Question. And then we're going to focus a little bit on the salat here. If a person is sick in the hospital, right, if they can't move, uh, maybe they can only move their eyes, etc. Do they still have to pray? They do. What if they can't make wudu? If they can't make wudu, what if a person's in the hospital? Huh? They can't move, there's no one there with them, they can't make wudu, the salah is in and it's about to go out. What are they supposed to do? They still have to pray? Huh? He has an exception. Exception of not to pray? I said, there's an exception that that person can't make wudu. So you salli ala hasab hal, meaning you pray whatever your condition is. You never let the salah be. But is it possible that a person has an excuse where they don't have to pray? For the men, for example, is there ever not? Is there ever an instance where a man doesn't have to pray? Huh? No. There's never a case where a man does not have to pray. Rather, the salat is always in effect for a man all the time. And this was an issue we spoke about the other night, uh, about praying. A person may look at this hadith and say, all right, well, I pray in my car sometimes. All right? Is the brothers here that pray in their car? Nobody prays in their car. Huh? You pull over and pray in the car. Pray outside. The other night, there were several people who said that sometimes they pray in their cars. Can you pray in your car, Shay? Huh? You can't? Can you pray in your car? You can pray in your car? Can you pray in your car? If you're traveling? Hold on. You said you can pray in your car if you're traveling? Can you pray in your car? 
Low Island. You say if you're traveling. Why if you're traveling? Of only if you can't stand. So the Prophet والسلام, was praying while he was riding on his riding beast. He was riding on top. You heard that? Is that authentic? No. It's authentic. I'm asking you, is it? I, I just heard. I heard a lot of stuff. No, hey. You never read it? No, I, I, I actually read it, but I actually So if you read it, you didn't hear it, you saw it. Vision. Have confidence, man, in what you read. You read it, you saw it. So now, what do we do now? We have a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, he prayed while he was sitting down. And then we have another hadith here, which is a command. Salli qa'iman. But the Prophet ﷺ, he commanded us to pray while we're standing. Right? So now the question is, is that an option? Do we, is this, this mean that it's recommended to pray while we're standing? Or is it an obligation to pray while? What is it? Obligation. But what about when the Prophet ﷺ was praying while he was sitting down? Huh? I'm asking, I don't know. Was it an extenuating circumstance? Huh? No, because this is this is a lot of brothers and sisters, they pray in their vehicles. Right? You never heard of this? People pray in their cars just to pray in their cars? I don't think so. I think they, they might have read that hadith and believed it's okay. Is it okay to pray in your car? You under no circumstance? Oh, you, you already got the hope. Huh? Can you pray in your car? Now you just heard what he said. No, no, that, you know, that, that's, that's generally... You can't like, camel back off somebody, man. <laughs> but that's like like the general order of, you know... The general order? All right. So the question is, can you pray in your car? Yes or no? So you said yes, you can pray in your car depending on the circumstance. So what circumstances then? So if it's so if the, your car broke down, you can pray in your car. So okay. So is that what happened with the Prophet Isaac Salah? He was traveling from state to state. Huh? Can you pray in your car? You can pray in your car. You can pray in your car based on what? If it's needed. If it's needed. like, you should get out and pray. No, we're not talking what you should do. I'm asking you, can you? I'm going to say, I'm going to have that. Tell you, huh? Can you pray in your car, Shay? Yes or no? We don't know that philosophy, Shay. Can you pray in your car? Yes or no? Yes. You pray in your car? Yes. Like, right. anybody agree with him? Yes. Everyone, based on the hadith, right? But then we just had a hadith where the Prophet Salam commanded us to pray while we're standing. And this command is a fi'lul amr. This means that it is obligatory. That's the origin. He said, pray while you're standing up. He said, and if you can't stand, then you can pray sitting down. And if you can't pray stand, sitting down, then you can pray on your side. Are you telling me that the Prophet Salam couldn't stand up when he was on his riding beast? Is that what you're saying? So what are you saying? I'm saying you can pray on your riding beast. I'm saying you can pray on your riding So I can pray, Fajr, Dohr, Asr, Maghrib, and on my riding beast. All right. So here's the here's how this issue is understood when it comes to praying in vehicles, etc. The Prophet he prayed on his riding beast a sunnah prayer, and not the obligatory prayers. So then, it is permissible for a person to pray inside of their vehicle in general if you are, if you are praying a sunnah, but 
If it is an obligatory prayer, then you must stand. And this is where this hadith comes in with a message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Salli qa'iman. Pray while you're standing up. فَإِن لَمْ تَسْتَطِيعَ فَقَاعِدًا If you're not able, then, then pray sitting down. فَإِن لَمْ تَسْتَطِيعَ فَعَلَى جَنْبٍ And if you're not able, to pray on your, on your side. So here's the situation. It's like this. If it's a sunnah prayer, then you can pray sitting down. If it's a sunnah prayer, you can pray sitting down. Huh? If it is an obligatory prayer, then you must pray what? Standing up. Like, well, what if you're on an airplane and there's no, you know, if you, know, if you stand up and start praying, they have no musallah. There's no place to pray on a plane, right? And if you stand up, you know they want to land the plane and put you in jail or something because they think you're doing something crazy, right? So what do you do in that case? In certain situations, you may have to pray in your chair because you're not able to stand. Well, then, is that clear? Oh, yeah. The person will say, what about if it's raining outside? If it's raining outside, go to the 24-hour Walmart, go over there, and go into the dressing room and pray in there. What if they don't have a 24-hour Walmart? You got to drive. I mean, they have their options. That's the point. You have to think outside the box. If, if you decided to think outside the box and there was no way around it, there's no way and it's dangerous and all, all the things that he mentioned, and it may be a different move, inshallah. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. If I'm not driving, it's how many people in the car? I'm asking how I many, if you're a passenger in a car with somebody and you need to pray and they won't stop, I'm asking you how many people are in the car? Huh? You in the drive. So you're telling me you're riding with somebody in the car that's not Muslim and you need to pray. Can't say that I'm asking because you. Because sometimes the ones be Muslim, sometimes they be. So then you need to check your companions. You <laughs> but you can not buy any companions. So why are you riding in the car with them? It's just by a good Muslim that picked you up. No, listen. There might be a good Muslim that came and picked you up. You can take it out of But he ain't praying. <laughs> listen what I'm saying. No, no, no. L listen what I'm saying. Let's say, for example, if that were the case, hypothetically speaking, you're in a car with somebody. You're like, listen, I need to pray. I don't care about all that. We ride anyway. And you have no way out of that situation. Then out of necessity, things, you know. Listen, out of necessities, something that is haram can become allowable, but it's still haram out of necessity. What does that mean? Allowable, huh? What does that mean? The zaqa'ida in al-Islam. Al-dururat tabihu mahdurat bi qadriha. That things that are impermissible can become mubah, meaning they can become allowable under stressful or circum certain circumstances. Like what? Like eating pork to stay alive, right? Um, so, but it, it, but pay attention in tebi. Eating pork will never be halal. It just will become allowable. It will become allowable to a certain extent for a certain amount of time. Some of the ulama, they even said, if it becomes allowable to eat pork, does that mean you eat pork to get filled, or do you mean you eat pork just to sustain your life? Some of the ulama differ. Some say if it's allowable to eat, then you exercise it to the fullest extent to nourish yourself, because you don't know when your next meal may be coming, etc. There's a difference of opinion on how much of it you take. But they say, What is qadriha? So most of them say, To the limit that you need to sustain your life. In any event, Islam is not difficult. Islam is a religion that has rules and regulations, right? But for every rule, or not for every rule, for some rules there may be exceptions depending on circumstances. This is why, if you look in any law, any system, of law, there are always rules, right? General rules that everyone must follow. 
And then when you listen to a person's specific situation, the, there may be an exception or a clause in the rule that will accommodate that type of situation. Did that make sense? Huh? So rules are not based on exceptions. Rules are not based on exceptions. For example, I'll give you an example. Uh, the exception is it's permissible to backbite some Muslims. You never heard that before? It's permissible to backbite? In certain circumstances. Is it permissible to backbite? Is it? When you're warning about the person? Is it in certain circumstances, is it permissible to backbite? Yes. What situations are those? When will it become permissible to backbite someone? Give me one. A business deal. You thinking about going in business with a brother or a sister and she, she's a thief. If a person's getting married, this might be a man and somebody asks, well, tell me about this. Oh, he beats his woman. This is backbiting, right? Right? But it's permissible. Still considered legal? Hey, it's a but it's permissible back by It's permissible, right? But the moral of the story is the or the rule is that backbiting is what haram, major sin, not permissible. But it can become permissible in certain what circumstances, in certain circumstances. But the origin of the rule of thumb is that it is haram. We're gonna stop with that. We got about. 20 seconds before the event. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shalwa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaha illa anta